Have you felt like you're juggling too many balls at once? Between work, family obligations, and the need for self-care, a healthy work-life balance can reduce stress, increase productivity, and improve mental and physical health. It helps you be present in both professional and personal life. It can feel overwhelming. But what if I told you that finding balance is possible? Today, we're diving into practical tips to help you manage your responsibilities while also prioritizing your well-being. In this video, we'll explore strategies to create harmony in your life, from setting boundaries at work to carving time for yourself. So let's get started. First, let's understand why balance is essential. A healthy work-life balance can reduce stress, increase productivity, and improve mental and physical health. It's, that's a no-brainer. Science consistently proves that and evidence shows. It helps you be present in both professional and personal life. Now, I remember when I was overwhelmed by work commitments and family responsibilities, I felt like I was always in a rush, often missing precious family moments. It was exhausting. It felt like I was pulled in too many different directions. I realized that without balance, I wasn't truly enjoying life. Now, did you know that according to a study by the American Psychological Association, Individuals who prioritize work-life balance report greater job satisfaction and overall happiness, not to mention a healthy life. It's not just about getting through the day and surviving. It's about thriving. Those two words, surviving and thriving, have totally different meaning. We want to aim for thriving, not just surviving. Now, how do we do that? How, we do, how do we, where do we start? when we want to achieve a work-life balance or a balanced life. Start by setting boundaries. That's a crucial step, critical step in achieving balance. It allows you to define what is acceptable in your work, what is acceptable in your personal life to help you protect your time and energy, your time and energy. So my tips for setting boundaries are the following. First, communicate clearly. There's no shortcut. Let your colleagues, let your family know, your spouse, your children, your availability. Use tools like calendars to block off personal time. When you don't schedule, then that's not a priority, period. So if you feel, if you really say, that's my priority, you've got to put it onto your schedule, to your calendar. Number two, in setting boundaries. Learn to say no. As fast as you can set boundaries, you've got to be quick and skillful in saying no. It's okay to decline additional work or family commitments that push you over the edge. So you got to start practicing. I can't take that on right now. Third tip for setting boundaries. Create a dedicated workspace, especially if you're working from home, like me. If you're working from home, Designate a specific area for work only to help separate your professional and personal life. So what boundaries have you set in your life that have made a big difference? Share your experiences in the comments. Next, we're going to talk about making family a priority. Family time is essential for your emotional well-being. It strengthens relationships and creates lasting memories. My tips for prioritizing family time, number one, schedule family activities. It's just like if you schedule work meetings, right? Schedule family time too. Whether it's a weekly game night or weekend outing, make it a non-negotiable. Spend time. You've got to. Number two, involve family in daily routines. Involve your family, your children, in chores or cooking. It's a great way to spend time together while getting things done. Like in my household, I cook, but I always 
call my kids, 15 year old twin boys, to do the table setting. Number three tip practice mindfulness together. Engaging in a mindfulness activities like yoga or meditation can be a great family bonding experience. I used to feel guilty about not spending enough time with my family due to work. But then I realized that even small moments like cooking dinner together or playing a board game, singing, can create significant connections. So what's your favorite family time or family activity? I'd love to hear how you spend time with your loved ones. Put in a comment section. Next, you're not just going to prioritize your family, but you're going to prioritize you. Prioritizing self-care. Self-care is not selfish. Break that belief. Self-care is not selfish. It's necessary because when you take care of yourself, you're better equipped to handle work and family responsibilities. So tips for prioritizing self-care. Schedule me time. Block out time in your calendar for you only for self-care activities. Whether that's reading, exercising, or indulging in a hobby. As for me, I love to play my piano. And that's one ways to one of my ways to de-stress my me time and usually takes like an hour or two. And I tell my family, I tell my kids not to disturb me unless if it's really very important, they want to, they need to talk to me. But otherwise, if you can wait and you have to wait. Number two, in prioritizing self-care, practice gratitude. Take a moment each day to reflect on what you're grateful for. This simple practice can improve your mental health, I tell you. Number three, limit screen time. Not only kids, but us adults too. Consider reducing your screen time, especially before bed. This can improve your sleep quality and overall well-being. Now, did you know? That self-care practices can involve your resilience against stress too. So if you're dealing with a lot of stress right now, you better prioritize self-care. Because investing in yourself can lead to better health and happiness and resilience to stress. So that's your go-to self-care activity. Let me know how you recharge. Friends, in finding balance in our life, know that we need to adapt and be flexible. The importance of being flexible, I cannot you know, emphasize enough. Why do we need to be flexible and adaptable? Simple, because life is unpredictable. And sometimes we have to adapt our plans. Embracing flexibility can reduce stress and help you find creative solutions to balancing your responsibilities. So my tips for being adaptable, number one, embrace change. Sooner you accept change, better off you'll be. When things don't go as planned, focus on what you can control. A positive mindset can, can, can help you adapt to unexpected changes. You're not going against the tide. There's no resistance. So there's less stress. By just simply accepting change. Number two, delegate responsibilities. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Share the task with family members or colleagues to lighten up your load. Number three, reevaluate regularly. Take each month to reassess your priorities because they do change. Okay? And adjust your schedule accordingly. Some people don't notice a year had passed, priorities had changed, and they're still following the same exact plan. That's why they couldn't reach their goal. There were times when my plans fell through and I had to pivot quickly. 
learning to embrace change allowed me to find that joy in um, unexpected family, you know, um, moments like a spontaneous family movie nights you know, when my work got hectic. So what did we learn today in today's video? Finding balance is about setting boundaries, prioritizing family, prioritizing self, being flexible and adaptable, accept change. Each of these elements is vital in creating a fulfilling life. What's one change you're going to implement after watching this video to achieve that better balance? Share your plans in the comments. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tips on health and wellness. Sharing this video can help others find balance in their lives too. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, balance is an ongoing journey, so be kind to yourself and take it one step at a time. Until next time, my name is Dr. Edlita Hamis, and I'm my lifestyle changer MD. I'll see you next week. Bye.